So, hello everybody. My name is Mervin, and I work here as the Android Dev uh, at Raise Labs. And today I'll be talking to you about a very interesting library, a uh, networking library rather, called Wally. -E. So, how many of you here have used Wally -E at all? So great! I have a great audience. <laughs> I hope to sell this uh, library by by the end of this talk. Uh, so. Uh, for the rest of this presentation, very briefly, I'll be introducing what the networking library is all about, some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks, limitations, and maybe in the end, uh, I'll dig a little deeper into how we can plug this library into your existing projects. So to start off with, uh, Wally -E was developed by Google, and they introduced this uh, in one of their Google I.O. events in 2013, and the purpose behind developing this library was at the time when some of the developers were working on uh, their Google Play Store SDK, they felt the need to come up with a library that can handle all their multiple network operations without interfering much with the user experience. And the meaning itself, it's not what we uh, know uh, basically from game or sports, it's, it's more to do with dispatching a bunch of project tiles at one time. So that's exactly what the uh, library does. It tries to handle multiple re uh, network requests at the same time, taking care of all the threading and synchronization, which you don't have to do at all. Uh, oh, so here's the diagram, <laughs> what exactly that means. Uh, so moving on to some of the benefits, uh, the first thing that really struck me when I started using this library myself was the request cancellation feature. Uh, a lot of you might have known, uh, right after Honeycomb, Google uh, Android, uh, they expect the developers to uh, offload all their uh, networking operations on a different thread, basically spawn a different thread and do it in a different thread. And we definitely uh, ended up using async tasks and I pretty much hated it myself. Uh, so especially, uh, let me give you an example of paginated list of items. Uh, so if you move on from one page to the other page uh, for a pleasant user experience, we def the user definitely cares about uh, all the data associated with each of the uh, individual list items than the thumbnail, thumbnails that are associated with the items. So definitely the user wouldn't care about all the thumbnails from the previous page. Uh, with this library, you can tag all the network requests and the moment you move on to the next page, you can cancel all those requests. And you can cancel them based on tags and as well as based on uh, all the priority. So by default, Wally -E sets the priority of all the images at the lowest level, and you can just cancel all those requests. And of course, it pre uh, pretty much uh, very well fits into uh, the activity lifecycle. So based on the appropriate lifecycle, you can do all the cancellation stuff, clean up stuff. The other interesting thing that I found with Wally -E was it's way too flexible in terms of plugging in whatever HTTP client that you want. Uh, so especially. A lot of you might have used HTTP URL connection or Apache HTTP client, but now people no more use Apache HTTP client because Google themselves, they don't maintain it. Uh, and of course, uh, some of the fans of OKHttp, OK yes, you can of course plug in your OKHttp OK into it. Uh, when it comes to caching, it does a brilliant job. It's absolutely transparent, so the uh, developer doesn't have to really care about what's happening internally. It does a one file per response with uh, in-memory indexing and also it's configurable. You can set the size of your cache. You can implement your own caching mechanism and plug it in. Uh, the super, super useful feature of Wally -E is uh, extensibility and customization. You can almost extend and customize almost every feature of Wally, -E, be it the requests. Uh, some of the requests that comes right out of the box is uh, JSON, JSON array, strings, and even image. And apart from that, if you have your very own uh, custom objects, you can write your own parsing functions and you can uh, set those custom requests. And of course, retry policies and backup algorithms based on your project needs, you can also uh, extend that and customize that. Uh, request priorities and ordering, something that I had spoken to you earlier, it does handle that too for you. Uh, when you can get both image loading uh, library as well as your RESTful client, why not use a library that handles both uh, instead of two separate libraries? That was my take on it. Uh, before I was using Retrofit for one of my projects and also Picasso, but when I found out that Wally -E can do both, I immediately jumped to this. Uh, and of course, the other thing is the network image view. Uh, this is one of the very cool widget that uh, 
Wally offers you. It handles all the uh, loading of memory, uh, loading of image. It has a attribute in it where you can set a URL and it does the loading part. It does the cleaning part and everything for you. You don't have to do anything yourself, especially when the view moves off the screen. It does the cleaning part for you. Uh, threading and synchronization, as I had mentioned to you earlier, there are uh, various uh, threading and synchronization at various levels, be it the cache level or the network operation level. It does that for you. By default, it has four threads in its pool executor, but you can always override that and set your own limit, however you want. And debugging and tracing, of course, it does a great job uh, in debugging and threading in case if you want to profile all your net network request activities and stuff, or for any of your other debugging purpose, everything is there within Wally. Uh, what are some of the limitations? So far I spoke to you all the great features, but some of the limitations which I personally felt was it's a great RESTful client. You can definitely build a beautiful uh, RESTful system connecting both the client and the ba remote backend. Uh, it does very well with small metadata operations like get and post, but it fails at streaming operations or large downloads. So when I say large downloads, when it comes to image loading too, if it's a really big bitmap, uh, the uh, outcome is unpredictable. It really doesn't handle it that well. And the other uh, limitation that I found was uh, right now it is a part of the Android open source project. So it's not available uh, either as a part of the SDK or the support library. And also, that also means that there are no artifacts, uh, be it in Maven or Bintray. So you'll have to pretty much clone the uh, library yourself and include it in your project. There's another workaround where you, uh, there is a mirror site that uh, constantly updates and syncs the uh, official Google repo. Uh, you can definitely include that in your Gradle file and uh, get the artifacts. But the only problem is Android doesn't officially support that or maintain that. Uh, here's a small getting started stuff. Uh, I just thought of uh, throwing this small little code snippet just to help you guys understand how simple it is to make a very basic string request, for example. So all that you need to care about as a developer is the request queue function and the request class itself. So the request queue, uh, it's pretty much, it's gonna be a singleton pattern. So you throw it somewhere in your app and have a reference to it throughout your app uh, lifecycle and then start queuing in all your requests into the uh, request queue. And within the request itself, you specify whether it's a get or a post or what else, uh, along with the URL, and then uh, provide the listeners for either the result, uh, the response, or the error, and then handle it. So it's pretty much, that's it. And uh, it's the same thing even for your image request or your JSON request or any other custom object request. So I hope you guys, uh, Appreciate all the various benefits of Wally, and I hope you guys start trying it right away in your existing projects. Thank you.